Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to explain how to solve merge conflicts that come up when using git stash. Now there are two main types of conflicts that generally arise. I'm gonna explain how to use both of those along with a couple tricks about how to maybe work around a merge conflict that might work better in your use cases. Now, as always, I'll be using live animations of what's happening under the hood while I'm issuing those commands. You're gonna find those live animations right above my head. So let's get started. Now, this is what my Git repository looks like at the moment. The white branch is mainline and it has two commits along with some local changes and a couple of stashed in progress files that are in that stash stack over there on the left. Now, if you wanna know how to use git stash to set aside drafts of in-progress work, I've got a whole video that goes over everything you need. You can find that video in the description or in the little pop-up that just appeared in the top right corner of this video. Now, if I list my stashes using git stash list, you can see that I have two. And if I go ahead and try to apply that second stash, I get a merge conflict. Now, when this happens, Git will abort the pop operation and put that stash back on the stack. And it's also gonna let us know what the problem is. So in this case, it's telling us that index.html, which is present in my working directory, has modifications. And those modifications conflict with some changes made to that same index.html file from my stash. And this makes sense because if I list my working directory, if I run git status, you can see that index.html is modified. And then if I also check now, if I also check what files are modified in the stash, you can see that index.html was also modified there. And in fact, I'll make it a little bit clearer by putting both of them on the screen so that index on mainline adds a logo and the index in the stash adds a nav bar. And Git doesn't know how to combine those two together. So how do we fix it? One, you could just stash the working directory changes in their own stash and apply the navigational components after that. Now, there's gonna be no merge conflict in this case because you've reverted that working directory back to a clean slate. The second way is by actually popping out those changes onto a separate branch using git stash branch like we talked about in the previous video. This is especially useful if you've pulled in changes from other collaborators since making that original stash. This is because that stash entry is anchored off of the commit in which it was created. So by pulling the changes out onto another branch, it allows you to work on your feature and then merge it back in when you need to using either merge or rebase, which you may be more familiar with. Um, but for now, let's talk about how to actually face that merge conflict head on and solve it. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually commit those changes on our working directory to a commit. Now, as you remember before, if I try to run a git stash pop and I have uncommitted changes, it's just going to abort the operation and not give us a chance to actually fix the conflict. So for now, I'm just going to add that index.html file to a commit, add a logo. Now that I have that committed, if I try to run git stash pop, now, when I run this, I get a more traditional merge conflict message that tells me there's unmerged paths in index.html. And by the way, you can see the other files from my stash are up above in green because they don't have any conflicts. They're ready to go. But in order to fix this, we need to open up that file that has the conflict and manually fix it. So in this case, that file is index.html and I'll just open it up in Vim. But of course, you can open it up in any text editor you want, whether that be, you know, an IDE like JetBrains or VS Code, or if you use another terminal editing software like Emacs. When you've got that file open for editing, you wanna look for these weird looking lines with the less than and greater than characters. This is a specific spot in the file that Git couldn't merge automatically. And as you can see, that top section indicates what that part of the file looks like on main. And below that, you can see what that part of the file looks like in your stash. Your goal is to manually replace this entire block with what those lines would look like after they got merged together. So in this case, you can see that I'm probably just gonna keep both the logo and the navigation bar changes. So I'll just go ahead and do that and also remove those git added um, less than and greater than lines. But again, you can make any changes you want here. The goal is just to remove any of these merge conflicts blocks and edit the file as if you're doing the merge yourself, which you are. <laughs> So after you're done that, you're just gonna to wanna to save and quit the file. Now in VI, this operation is gonna be escape colon WQ, but of course you're using another text editor, just save the file. Now if I run git status again, you can see that nothing's really changed. It's because we haven't staged that index.html file and told git that we actually fixed the conflict. So I'm gonna run git add index.html. Now that I've staged this, if I run git status, you can see that everything looks back to normal and I've gotten kicked out of that merge conflict workflow. At this point, you fixed the merge conflict and gotten rid of the warnings. So you could technically move on, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. It's not good practice. You're gonna to wanna to leave a paper trail of what just happened for readability and future engineers or even yourself. So I'd recommend taking that extra step of creating a new commit with this merge. And I'll do that by just running git commit, giving it a name. And 
And then now if I run git log, you can see that I now have a commit that's nice and documented. One last piece of cleanup you need to do is manually remove that stash entry. If you go to actually apply a stash entry and there's a merge conflict, even if you solve that merge conflict, Git is going to not delete that stash entry from the list. You're gonna have to do that manually. So if I run git stash list, you can see that that navbar stash is still there. I need to drop it manually. I can run git stash drop and then specify the index. Now, if I run git stash list again, you can see that that stash entry is now dropped. Now as a quick caveat, I've done all of my development against the mainline branch in this example, but in practice, you'll likely be using feature branches for development to keep your work separate from your coworkers. And it's the same workflow, whether you're applying the stashes onto mainline or applying them onto a feature branch. Speaking of merge and rebase and other Git techniques, I've got a whole playlist of other Git videos explained in just this way. Now, please share this video with anybody you feel could benefit from it. I do strive for these videos to be the best and most intuitive videos on the internet when it comes to Git, but they do take quite a bit of time. So consider subscribing if you feel I've earned it. And other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.